Hello, I'm Saida Joffrey for the RUSD Bridge. And on today's show, from Cold Middle School, we have Principal Armando Urtiega, along with Mrs. Smith, who is the instructional coach of Cold Middle School. So let's join them. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. Yeah, of course. And I wanted to first start off with you, our teacher. Um, I know that as an instructional coach, you are assisting with teachers. How has that been going through this pandemic? Um, actually, the teachers have been taken off and running with it. They just needed some technical assistance on some of the Google Classroom features and just some more online resources to help students to do the work while they're at home. But our teachers were already using technology within the classroom, so it wasn't really a, too hard of a transition for them because we have the iReady program and Alex and other you know, programs that they're already using. Now, Mrs. Smith, are you a product of the Rialto Unified I School am. District? Yes, Talk I to am. me about this history. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, um, my family moved to Rialto when I was five. Oh. And so I went through the entire Morgan uh, school system through sixth grade at that time. So you're a Mustang, grade. Morgan yes, Mustang. That's right. And then I went to Frisbee Middle School. Then you're so a Falcon. Falcon. <laughs> and then in uh, um, ninth grade, I went to uh, Eisenhower. Eisenhower High School, and, and you're an Eisenhower. eagle. I'm an eagle. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, so it's, it, I'm so overjoyed to come back home, and um, you know, just be. A, my family is still here. Okay. My mom lives right across the street from the district office, and so it's still home for me. Excellent. Thank you so much for being on the show, Thank you. Uh, Mr. Urtiega. I just want to talk to you a little bit about. First of all, what is your student population at Cold Middle? We have 1,068 students this oh, school year. So and staff members? Staff members, we have uh, 43 teachers and approximately 35 classified staff members. So how are things going at the school? Well, right now they're going, they're going well. I mean, with distance learning, uh, Cole, we already had a little bit of a head start with our Google Classroom and our, a lot of our teachers are already using it as part of their instruction. So it was an easy transition for them. It's not the same like in the classroom, of course, when kids learn best when they're in the classroom. But the transition for us was smoother than probably most and we were glad about that because our teachers had the thought of using Google Classroom and being part of that. So definitely kudos to them and the hard work that they've done previously. So um, you know, our students are learning and they're doing some great things. Wonderful. Mrs. Smith, let's get back to you. Um, what is it that about working at Kolb that you just find so much fun? Oh my gosh, um, that's funny you ask because I was just telling my kids how I miss being in school because it is so much fun. <laughs> um, I was talking to our student as well, Destiny, and she was talking about the fun just being at the school campus. And so for me, it's just every day there's something new. Um, you know, whether it's helping this math teacher or whether, you know, we're having a meeting to collaborate on, you know, um, what is going to be our next instructional strategy or um, just the camaraderie within our staff and, you know, meeting and I, together. Go and ahead. I know, no, sorry. And I know that you work more with the coaching and assisting the teachers, as Mr. Yurtiega told me, mm -hmm. uh, so more so than the, ch the child, the students. Do you find some challenges there that students aren't logging in or maybe the participation's kind of waning or do you think that everybody just kind of took the bull uh, you know, by the horns and just went? Are you referring to the students? The, stu the teachers. Oh, yes, the teachers have taken the, up the challenge. I'm, I'm really proud to say that I'm a part of the staff because mm -hmm. they have. Um, they needed very little assistance from me and maybe just kind of look over my lesson plan, see if this is going to be, you know, something the students will understand on their own because they're building on the knowledge that they were already starting whenever they left before spring break. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ortega, I received some emails from some of your students, which you may not know of uh, because they were going all over the place. Some of the teachers said, hey, uh, Mrs. Joffrey, can you please look at this? This is so cool. And then I reached out to you and you had some students saying some pretty remarkable things like, thank you, Mr. Yurtiega. I miss you. Can't wait to be back on my campus. I appreciate some of the things you're doing for us. How does that make you feel? <laughs> I mean, it's always nice to be able to hear some kudos, some great things from students. And so I think they were reaching out. It was the principal, day, uh, day of the principal a couple weeks ago, and they were reaching out with a special message. And it's nice to hear that. And I'm very proud that the things that I'm doing at the school and being part of uh, the, that school community has really uh, grown. And our kids are really, you know, 
enjoying it. So they miss it, and but it feels good. It's nice, and I, I thanked and I responded back to the students, and I said thank you very much. Well, that's important, yeah, because mm -hmm. when they email you, they want maybe yeah. some sort of a feedback mm -hmm. back, and that's all we have now left is mm -hmm. through technology. Mm -hmm. um, do you, you have three boys? Yes. How is it at home? Well, I mean, wow. I really give praise to the parents who are doing distance learning because not only am I the principal and assisting teachers and students to do their own instruction, we're doing it on the other end with our three uh, boys. I have twins that are seven, and then I have a third uh, boy who today turned six. Oh, so I got three give a boys. Shout out to your yeah, son. happy birthday, happy Adam! Birthday. Here's a, today's the sixth birthday. <laughs> Um, so three boys under seven, uh, kindergarten, first grade, and so definitely it's a transition. They keep us busy, mm -hmm. and the life of being able to balance the time between the both. My wife is an elementary teacher, so she does the bulk of the learning online with the students and, and teaching and instruction, instructing. But it's it's challenging, but we're ma managing to make it work. Wow! So this is a K twelve family. Oh yeah, yeah <laughs> K twelve and sometimes even pre K if yeah, if you ask my wife. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. I'm going to get back to you because I do want to talk about some heavy duty accomplishments for Benef Cold Middle School, which of course I think hit uh, fifty. It's probably fifty two, fifty three year old school. Yes. yes. Um, but going back to you as well, how do you feel that this pandemic is going to change the way or has changed the way that education is now? from a teacher's point of view, classroom teacher's point of view, and a leader's point of view? It is, um, <clears throat> we have some teachers who, Mr. H, who's already off and running with a lot of technology. Say his name, Mr. give him a, H, especially Mr. If it's H, a, yeah. yes. If, especially if it's a positive. He, <laughs> yes, Mr. H, he's, he's, he's our guru that we go to to help teachers with online and te technology learning already, mm -hmm. you know, for since years ago. Okay. And so um, I think it's making the teachers become a little bit more familiarized with technology and, and um, as Mr. Taylor mentioned at our last staff meeting that people are already getting degrees. You can get PhDs now on online. And it's and been so, happening before the pandemic. That's right. And so we want to be able to offer that same opportunity to our students where maybe coming back we'll have more of a blended learning where they are in, in the classroom as well as taking you know some online instruction at home as well. Oh, wow. And you know what it was important to me as the principal is that Part of the middle school or public school is we need to prepare our students for the future of what they're going to get into, uh, you know, in the workforce. And if we're not giving them the tools and accessing the th avenues and things that they're doing, they're not going to be able to, uh, you know, thrive as much as we want. So getting them online learning, learning from the classroom, distance learning is going to help them because when they get to school and college, they're going to do that. And then, of course, computers are everywhere. So we really try to promote technology and access to our students. And so that's why we're really pushing uh, the technology piece the last couple of years. So Mr. Ortiega, I want to hit on something that's really important. Obviously, yes. we have five middle schools in Rialto Unified School District and great things coming out of Rialto Middle School with the Green Ribbon School Silver Level that we just got from California Department of Education. We have great things from Jehu, which by the way is our largest middle school, and then of course Coursera Middle School, and then we have uh, Frisbee Middle School with the Falcons. Great things in all middle schools. Last year, or this coming school year, you exited CSI, which is a state watch, right? Yes. yes. Tell me a little bit more about CSI and what it takes. Well, CSI is a, a designation from the state of schools that basically are, were not hitting their mark in their English and uh, math scores and subgroups were not performing as much as they should be. And so they go under state watch. And so um, last school year when I came to Cold Middle School, um, you know, the school was identified. And so part of that, our, our, our with the great wisdom of our superintendent, he asked that we I go over to the Cove. We've done some great things over at Jehu, and I was very proud to be the principal at Jehu for seven years. The school culture, academic, school life was very, very uh, important and rich and thriving there. And so coming over to Cove and wanting to interject that same type of school culture at Cove to try to really move that school and really just revitalize and, and revise some of the things happening there. So when we got designated at CSI, Sorry to interrupt you. CSI, what does that exactly stand for? Comprehensive Support and Improvement. Okay. And so that's a state designation of schools that just needed to make some uh, more growth in English and math. And so uh, it was very important for once we were identified, what are some of the factors that we needed to do as a school site to really help get us out, uh, get us out of the CSI status? And so 
uh, I pretty much took the mold that I did at Jay Hewlett and really grew at it. We did some successful things at my previous site and the first thing I wanted to really tackle was the school culture. That's important to me as a principal. You can't learn anything in the classroom, you can't do anything unless the school culture, it, we have the same focus, same mission at our school site. So being able to get teacher leaders, being able to get their involvement, get student leaders and get them involved. Systems and processes are very, very important. So making sure that everyone understands what they need to be doing and why they're doing it. And so that's beautiful because I have to stop you there. Yeah. You didn't change the entire mm -hmm. uh, faculty. Oh, no. no. Okay, no, good. No, no. no this it is pretty only. much the only staff that uh, was new were any retirees and or transferees probably out of the 43, maybe two or three were brand new. So oh, this was the, the same staff. The testament that, to your staff yeah, then. Yes, as well. and mm -hmm. they did the hard work, they did a great job. So those teacher leaders were just really uh, looking forward to just a, uh, re, uh, just a change of direction, let's put it that way. And it was nice to be able to have them um, focus in uh, our instructional program, being able to have them collaborate, meet, look at what was important at our school site and change that direction. And it was nice, um, encouragement, giving them their accolades when they're hitting those milestones. I think those things are very, very uh, important to them. They just want to be acknowledged for the hard work they're doing. Our students and our school uh, really had some great impacts and I was proud of that. I mean, little baby steps. Our honor roll numbers started going up. Our uh, students that were uh, coming to the office for the negative reasons, they were in the classroom, they were engaged. And I think that, that really helped um, change the direction of our school. And while we're talking about accolades, state accolades and so forth, <laughs> just within two years, you have received two awards. I know because a lot of the district staff, along with your schools, have attended that. One is the AXA Middle School Principal of the Year, yes. and that happened last year. 2017. And 2017, yes. wow, it's been, okay. Yeah. And you just recently got one this year yes. in November, December, and that was also as a principal, the VIP principal of the year. Talk to me about that. Yeah, um, you know, anytime we get accolades as the principal, I, you gotta give, it's the teachers and the staff and the Aww. students. They did the hard work. I mean, I am just a, that orchestra leader that kind of gets the, the music together and, and try to get everything in, in, in as synchronized as possible. But our teachers and our staff really are, are the true award winners with those. But in 2017 was the AXA Principal of the Year and very proud I, I received that when I was at JHU for the great things that our staff was doing there. And this past year was the California League of Middle Schools, the Educator of the that's Year, the VIP uh, that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And that's at Cole where I'm at now. And um, it was nice to be able to have that, but I give all the credit to our teaching staff and great people like Ms. Smith and our students who really um, done some great things at Cole. And I also want to say at the California Middle School uh, teacher, um, one of our finalists was also Mrs. Lewis Nelson. So that was that was great. Amy Nelson yes. from uh, Coursera Middle School. Yes. So we've got some great nice schools. To keep the love in the district. It is. <laughs> we do. We do. Well, congratulations for those two big awards. Oh, Very prestigious. Thank and you. And of course, coming out of CSI. Now I know there's another word for CSI, and it's not the television <laughs> yeah. show. Mrs. Smith, you were part of that, though. Yes. Tell me. Exciting when you heard the news that, hey, we're out of the watch. They yeah, watch. Yeah, very exciting because I remember sitting down with, you know, our director of category and saying all these things we had to do to get out of it. And then it was like, we're out of it. And like he said, it's the hard work of the teachers because I get to sit in on some of those, you know, staff, uh, you know, lunchtime mm -hmm. meetings, behind the scenes <laughs> conversations. And a lot of them, they really, they're very appreciative of uh, Mr. Ortega's leadership because like you said, they were good teachers already and they just needed somebody to kind of give them that direction and focus and say, this is what we're uh, aspiring to. And they've all taken on leadership positions and taking ownership for their classrooms. You know, the students can attest to the teachers really, you know, going in and making sure that the students understand, establishing those connections and relationships with their students so that, you know, they're keeping them in the classroom and not suspended and just, um, making sure that they understand the material and knowing that they can always come to their teachers and access And, and you them. know what the great thing about this with CSI, we were able to exit in one school year. Mm -hmm. I mean, we did that typically it takes remarkable. two, three years with the old program improvement from a few years ago, but we did this in one year and tackled, and that was, that, that was probably the biggest uh, uh, kudos that we can give our staff because they took that and they, we understand, understood what we needed to do to make growth and to, to do some great things. Our CAF scores really show our subgroups. And so it was a lot of things that we had building blocks to put in place. And when we got the recognition of all the schools that exited, we were the only one, we were very proud of that. 
Excellent. Well, I'm going to say thank you so much to you, you. Mrs. Smith, for being in here. You're an awesome, mm -hmm. awesome guest. We, I love the energy and I love the positivity <laughs> that you're bringing out thank there. You for me. And of course, and of course, uh, uh, Mr. Yurtie got one more question before we let you go. I'm a parent. I'm in Rialto um, or Fountain area or, you know, Lyle Creek area, Bloomington area. Why would I want to send my child to Kolb Middle School? Well, Kolb is an awesome place for our middle school students. We have an awesome experience there. I mean, we have opportunities for our students to participate and be engaged. We have an awesome AVID program, ASB, clubs, school culture. I mean, it's just an awesome place. We have academics. We have some great teachers that have rigor and their engagement in the classroom. We are thriving in our, in our academics, our instruction. Students are learning while they're at, at school. Uh, we have a great PBIS program. We are a silver recognized PBIS school. You just can't stop, huh? No, no, there's a lot of things. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of things because I want to, I want to get the things for students and why we want to come mm -hmm. because they, you know, at this age, they want things besides just the, you know, the, 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 the four walls of the classroom. I mean, we have an awesome art program, our art and a music program. They do mm -hmm. great things. And we're adding a new gaming classroom computer gaming class that's really going to take off this year i know a lot of students as part of our electives um and gaming so all those things that are really going to high interest but our number one priority safety and instruction Kolb is a safe place and we are learning we have amongst the highest test scores in the district we are very proud of that again <laughs> the, with the with the lead of miss smith and our teachers they do some great things and i say why wouldn't they want to be there Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Ortega. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mrs. Thank Smith. You. I'm Saida Joffrey, and thank you for joining us for RUSD Bridge. Until next time.